probably impossible to start with unconscious matter and to boot up consciousness. I think it's impossible. And no theory has been able to work. You're saying that it has to start from consciousness first and then everything comes from there. My, my, qu my question now is going to be, why do you think that uh, spirituality, psychedelics, and all this this culture that seems completely untied to science and to math, they're really talking about this consciousness and they really do believe that consciousness is fundamental as well. Why do you think they have sort of uh, stuck with that ideology? Well, it's, it's interesting because, uh, you know, mystical spiritual traditions have said things like this for thousands of years. And, I think you know they're on to something, right? They're 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 saying there's more to reality than what you see with your eyes. It's more than just space and time and physical stuff. And when you die, there that may not be the end. And so they've been saying that. On the other hand, when you look at where the real progress where the, has come intellectually, it's not really come from that group. It's come from these physicalists who say, no, study space and time and physical objects and write down mathematics and so forth. And that's turned out to be you know, incredible in terms of actually making theories and science and so forth. So we have this meeting, right? On the one side, the people are saying the spiritual stuff is fundamental. And then the other saying, well, no, we'll just go with atoms in the void and, 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 and they, they make the progress. And, and so how do, I, how do we put these together? Well, what's interesting is I think... They both have a piece of the puzzle. I think the spiritual, mystical side is, is, is right. There's more than just space and time. So they're, they're, they're right about that. But the, the hard-nosed side has been, and has been largely physicalists. Uh, I think that they've been wrong about the physicalism, but they've been right about the methodology of science. Make mathematically precise theories. Tell us experiments that we can do to test them that could show you wrong. That's really powerful. And the reason they've had such success, and, and, and they've taken the success to show that spirituality must not be fundamental, is because they've only been studying the headset. Because they've been studying the headset, and the headset is not consciousness, it's perfectly fine to, to ignore consciousness and just study the headset. So that's why they've made tremendous progress. But now we're at this place in human evolution where the two sides need to meet. We need, the scientists themselves are telling us space-time is doomed. We've been studying the headset. They, they understand that now. We've been studying a headset, and we don't know what's outside the headset. Now, unfortunately, the spiritual side, they, they have a good intuition about what might be outside the headset, but they haven't had the tools to make that rigorous. So they can't, they're telling us the same thing today that they've said 3,000 years ago. Well, for a scientist, if you're saying the same thing now that you said 3,000 years ago, <laughs> I mean, I don't even want to be dealing with the same stuff that was dealing 30 years ago, much thousand, much less 3,000 years ago. So, so you can see why the two sides would be at odds. But we need to lay down our arms, the, 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 the barriers between us. We need the method of science, the hard-nosed rigor, precise mathematical theories, the humility to propose experiments that could show that you're wrong. In other words, non-dogmatism. Now, individual scientists are dogmatic, but science as a social enterprise is not dogmatic because you make you have other scientists try to show that you're wrong. You may not try to show that your own theories are wrong, but other scientists will be happy to show that your theory is wrong. So it's that sense that science is not dogmatic. I mean, individual scientists are. What we need is that non the social institutional non-dogmatism for the spiritual ideas. And so how do we start? We start humbly by saying, let's propose a mathematical model of consciousness. You go, how could you possibly do that? Consciousness is, you can't put your fingers on it. You can't possibly, it's, it's not possible to do science of, of consciousness. But, but just imagine saying the same thing about space 400 years ago. Before we had, how could you possibly put mathematics on space? I mean, you can't even feel it. I mean, how do you put your fingers on space? You, and yet, we did, you know, Newton, put some numbers on it. We have you know, Cartesian coordinates and we put numbers on it and we just try it and we, and, and it works for a while. And then, then Einstein comes along and says, no, you didn't quite do it right. And he puts different 
mathematical structures on it. And, and we keep doing it. And so that's what we have to do with conscience. We, we never make the mistake of saying that the math is the territory, right? If I am building a computer simulation of the weather, you don't need an umbrella when you go into the simulation room. You will not get rain. The, the simulation does not create rain. And a, a mathematical theory of consciousness does not create consciousness. It's just a theory. The mathematics isn't the, the consciousness. So, so what we need is the two sides to come together. Let's take the intuitions. I think there are good intuitions from the thousands of years of mystical spiritual traditions. We have the powerful tools of science that can help us to make those intuitions precise so that we can see their true power, right? In some sense, the spiritual traditions haven't yet experienced the power that comes from taking your ideas, making them precise, and then letting the mathematics tell you things that you would never have guessed about what you already believed. <clears throat> I mean, just to be concrete, when Einstein wrote down his theory of general relativity, his intuition was, if I'm in an elevator and the elevator starts to fall freely, just fall, then I would all of a sudden become weightless in the elevator. It turns out that's right. It's a wonderful intuition. It, it took him eight years to go from that intuition to the mathematical equation. Eight years of probing in the dark, learning mathematics, trying things, having them not work, pulling his hair out, not being able to sleep at night. It was a really tough eight years on Einstein. And he was Einstein. He's not like he's not a stupid guy like Hoffman. He's Einstein. He's doing this for eight years. But at the end of it, he got this equation, and then the equation became the teacher. A year later, someone else, Schwarzschild, um, came, wrote to Einstein and said, hey, your equation uh, predicts the existence of the structure that we now call a black hole. Einstein didn't know that. He didn't like it. In fact, he disbelieved in black holes for, for decades. So that's the power of getting your intuitions, which could be deep and right and genius, and putting them in mathematics because then they come back and teach you. That's what I want to see from the spiritual side. I want to take these ideas that are sitting there, but their real potential, at least this aspect of their potential, has not yet been unleashed. We want our ideas to come back in mathematical form and become our teachers. And so I want science and spirituality to interact the mathematical rigor and experiments of science with some of the insights of the spiritual traditions, some will have to go, some are wrong. And that's part of the humble thing. I mean, we have to admit that we're wrong. I mean, Einstein's ideas about space and time were brilliant, but space-time is doomed, right? So even in Einstein, I mean, again, it's, it's not that his work was pointless, far from it. It, it was because of the rigor of Einstein's theory of space-time that his own theories are telling us that space-time is doomed. That's the power when the, your own theory tells you where it stops. Now you've got a really a real scientific theory.